I'm so excited for you to be joining me today for this fun Ami pattern. Amigurumi is always fun for making these little stuffies and I know kids love them but I love them too. I think they're absolutely adorable. Today we'll be making this axolotl. This is my um, inspired by my son who wants one of these salamanders for Christmas and I just don't want to have a real one around. Um, it's just a lot of work to have a live animal. And I thought he might be appeased by making a cute little crochet stuffy for him. This one I've made in pink, but today on camera, he's expressed that he likes the blue axolotls and that they are more rare in Minecraft. So I'm sure that's where this is all inspired from. So I will be using the Wonderland Heather and the Superwash Cadet and the Oyster Heather from Wool of the Andes from We Crochet. For the eyes, I simply used a fingering weight yarn. This is a tweed, also or a twill, also from We Crochet. It's just a fingering weight yarn in a dark color. Um, you don't need much at all for the eyes, so if you happen to have any scraps around that will work, that will be great. You'll need some scissors, a yarn needle, and then um, obviously I'm grabbing one over here, a stitch marker. We do need a stitch marker for this pattern to keep track of our rounds. And then of course a crochet hook. I will be using this Tulip Rose 3.5 millimeter hook. I love this for color work. It's very similar also to the Clover Armoire um, line as well. I think they're great for color work. Um, they have really easy tips to work into um, the stitches. We'll be working this pattern today by using the yarn under method versus the yarn over, which creates tighter stitches for us. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, another supply you will need for this pattern is a polyfill, like a fiber fill, or you can use scrap yarn. This is so that we can stuff our dolls and make them shape correctly. And then also, if you want um, some washers, or I've also seen people use um, popcorn kernels. In the very bottom of this, I used some washers, a couple different sizes. It not only helps it shape, but it stands up better and it adds some weight to the bottom. I was using quarters and then my husband was uh, like, what are you doing? And he went to the store and bought me some washers. And I do find that they work quite nicely. So this little guy is worked from top down for the body. The arms are sewn on after and the hat is detachable. So that's made at the end as well. So we're going to start by working the head of this cute little peg doll starting from the top down and then we'll switch colors and finish out the bottom. So his head to his body is made in one piece. I'm going to be starting with the Oyster Heather, but you can choose any beautiful skin color you want for your doll. I'm going to be working a um, magic circle. If you've never done one, feel free to uh, visit my blog. The substitution for this is to chain two and work six single crochet stitches into the second chain from the hook. Today I'll be working six single crochet stitches into the magic circle. Now, I want you to notice that I am yarning under my hook versus over. So instead of going over and grabbing my yarn, I'm putting the yarn under my hook and then finishing the stitch. What that does is it kind of makes the stitch tighter. It crosses the front to be more of an X than a V. It's also known as the cross stitch stitch because if you uh, make a bag or something like that and you want something tighter, you can then go back and it's easy to work cross stitch over this. It works in more of a grid with less of a slant. We'll be using this today for our Ami pattern. So after I have worked six stitches into the magic ring, I'm going to close it, but not all the way. I find leaving some space is helpful until you get to the next round. So for round two, we are going to be single crocheting two stitches into each stitch around, still using that yarn under method for this entire pattern. Now I want to note, since we're working continuously, I did not join, I did not chain. We're just working this continuously. You'll want to mark the first stitch in your round of every round so that you can keep track of where you are. So I'm going to go ahead and work two stitches in each stitch around which means at the end of round two, we will have 12 stitches. Now for round three, I'm going to move my stitch marker for a second. I can go ahead and pull 
that magic ring tight so that it closes. If you want, you can weave in this end right now. And then I'm going to be working round three. I'm going to work two single crochet stitches into the first. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pause, mark that first stitch of this round. And then I'm going to single crochet into the next stitch. And that's what I will be repeating around. Two single crochets into the next, and then one single crochet into the next. At the end of this round, we will have 18 stitches. Now for round four, I'll move my stitch marker and place two single crochet stitches into the first stitch. Then mark the first stitch of the round. And now I will single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And that's our repeat. So two single crochets into the next, so we do an increase, and then single crochet into the next two stitches. Repeat that around, and at the end of round four, we will have 24 stitches. Now for round five, we will start by doing two single crochet stitches in the first, so once again, we'll be increasing. Place your stitch marker into the first stitch of the round, and then we will single crochet into the next three stitches. And that's our repeat around. So two single crochets, and then single crochet three. At the end of round five, we will have a total of 30 stitches. Now for round six, we will do two single crochet stitches in the first, marking the first stitch of the round, and then we will single crochet into each of the next four stitches. This is our last increasing round for the head of this peg doll. So that's two single crochets into the next, and then single crochet four, and repeat that around, and at the end of round six, you will have a total of 36 stitches. Now for round seven through 14, we're simply going to be single crocheting in each stitch around, marking that first stitch of the round, without increasing. So you'll just be working rounds seven through 14 of 36 stitches, around and around. And I just wanna note, you'll notice that this curls inward. The side that is facing us as we're working is the right side. This is the wrong side of our work. So it will curl in and eventually you can flip it and then it will start to curl out and you can work around it. I actually prefer to work um, around and around with this curling in until I get to the point that I've worked enough that it flips out and really holds its shape. By doing so, it allows these stitches to be quite tight and worked nicely for shaping our body and our head. Now that I've worked to round 15 is what we are currently on, this is where we're going to start to decrease this head. Now to do a decrease in amigurumi, I like to do an invisible decrease where we single crochet two together, but a little bit differently. So the first two stitches of this round, I will single crochet two together. The way I like to do it for amigurumi is I insert my hook into the front loop only of the first stitch, and then I'm going to just rotate my hook and insert it into the front loop only of the second stitch. Then yarn um, under your hook, pull up a loop, and then complete the stitch. And mark that as the first stitch in the round, and that is an invisible decrease. It looks really nice for Ami. And then we're going to single crochet into the next four stitches. And that's going to be our repeat around. So we will single crochet two together, and then single crochet in the next four. At the end of round 15, we will have decreased to 30 stitches. Now for round 16, we will be decreasing again. I'm gonna move my stitch marker and we'll single crochet two together for the first two stitches. And then mark that as the first stitch of the round. And then we are going to single crochet into the next three stitches. 
And that's our repeat around. So we will single crochet two together and then single crochet into the next three stitches. At the end of round 16, we will have 24 stitches. Now for round 17, we're going to decrease one more time here and we're going to do a single crochet two together for the first stitch. Mark that stitch. And then we're going to single crochet two and that's our repeat around. So that is single crochet two together and then single crochet two. At the end of round 17, we will have 18 stitches. And then for round 18, we'll do one round single crochet without decreasing. So we'll have 18 stitches for round 18 as well. Now at this point, at the end of round 18, if you want to start stuffing as you go, it's not a bad idea. It's easier to get your fingers into the head and really get it stuffed well, um, but you don't want it stuffed so much that it's hard to work your stitches because you can just keep stuffing as we go. Now for round 19, we're going to change to the color we want. Now for this first one, I did a pink. For this pattern, I'm going to be using a blue. For this round, I will be working into the back loops only, which means not this front loop, but the back loop only. The way I like to work changing my yarn though, is I like to go to my last stitch and right before I do the last yarn over and pull through, I'll grab my new color yarn over and pull through. And now I'm ready for the um, next stitch. So the first stitch in the round for round 19 will be a single crochet into the back loop only. I'm still using the um, yarn under method for these stitches, but I'm just working them in the back loop. I just kind of like the line it makes for changing colors. So I'm going to be working 18 stitches around in the back loop only. Now, as far as our head colors color goes, we can fasten that off. If you want to weave it in, you can. I'm a little bit lazy and it doesn't really matter. I just tend to tuck in my ends as I go. They add a little bit to the stuffing. Now for round 20. For round 20, we're going to be doing two single crochet stitches in the first. And then mark the first stitch of the round. And then we are going to single crochet into the next eight stitches. And then we're going to repeat that again to the end of the round. So two single crochets into the next and then single crochet eight. This increases from 18 to 20 stitches for round 20. And then for round 21, we're simply going to do a round of single crochet. So for round 21, do 20 single crochet stitches around. Now for round 22, we're going to be increasing again. So we're going to do two single crochet stitches into the first stitch and then mark the first stitch of the round. And then we will single crochet into the next four stitches. And we're going to be repeating that around. So this round will increase by four stitches. And at the end of round 22, we will have 24 stitches. So that is a two single crochet into the next and then single crochet four, repeating that all the way around. And then for round 23, we will do just a single crochet into each stitch around, not changing the stitch count. Now for round 24, we're going to increase again. We're going to do two single crochet stitches into the first, marking that first stitch of the round. And then we're going to single crochet into each of the next five. And that's our repeat around. We'll be doing two single crochets into the next and then single crochet five all the way around, increasing to 28 stitches. And then for rounds 25 through 28, we will simply just be doing single crochet stitches without increasing, keeping the stitch count at 28 stitches. For round 29, we will be working in the back loop only again, and we're just going to do a slip stitch around in each stitch. So 
we're just going to be doing that slip stitch all the way around in the back loop only. And for the slip stitch, we don't have to have it tight or twisted so you can work it as normal. Just be sure to mark that first stitch in the round so that you know when you come back around again. And that's round 29. Now we're going to be working in the back loop only again for this next round, but we are also going to be doing some decreasing. So we're going to single crochet two together, and I do like to work that through the back loops only for the very first stitch. And then we're going to go ahead and mark it. And then we're going to single crochet into the back loop only of the next two stitches. And we're going to repeat that all the way around until we have 21 stitches for this round. So that's single crochet two together in the back loop only, and then in the back loop only single crochet two and repeat that around. Now for round 31, we're going to be bringing back in our oyster heather and for the last stitch of round 30, I am going to do that last yarn over with my new color so that I have switched and I'm ready for round 31. So now for round 31, we can go ahead and we can fasten off our blue yarn or the color that you used for your body. We can even just tuck that in. And then for round 31, we will be doing single crochet stitches all the way around in the front loop only this time. So no decreasing or increasing, but we're working in the front loop only and we will be single crocheting into each stitch around. Now before we start round 32, this is a great spot to really get some of the stuffing done and the shaping up until this point. Now for round 32, we will be working in the back loops only for this round, and we are going to start by single crocheting the first two stitches together and mark that first stitch of the round. And then we're going to single crochet into the next, and we're going to repeat that around. So we're going to single crochet two stitches together, working in the back loops only, and then single crochet into the next. This will decrease from 21 stitches to 14. Now round 33, our next round, will be the last round that we work for the body. It will close off the bottom of this. So right now is a good time to go ahead and add some weight into this, whether you use washers or um, I've also heard that um, popcorn kernels can work well as well too. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to slide in some washers here before I close it. And I like to shape those right around the bottom, right where I'm doing a lot of those front loop and back loops. And it adds a lot of weight and helps it really stand up well on its own. So I've got my washers in there and now I'm ready for round 33. For round 33, we are simply going to be single crocheting two together in each stitch around. This will decrease it from 14 stitches to seven stitches. After completing round 33, we can go ahead and fasten off and grab our yarn needle. Now using your yarn needle, weave through the front loop only of all the stitches around. Once you've weaved through all those stitches, you can go ahead and simply pull that closed and then weave in your ends. Now that we've got our cute little head and body ready, it's time to set this aside and we're gonna make some cute little arms. We're going to be starting the arms similar to the way that we did the head in that we are going to do six single crochet stitches inside of a magic circle.
we're going to be closing that circle almost all the way, but leaving some space until after this next round, where we are going to do um, two single crochets in the first. And notice, once again, we're not going to be joining. We're working continuously here. So we're gonna go right into that very first stitch of the round and work two single crochets using a stitch marker if needed. And then we're going to single crochet into the next two stitches and then repeat that. That will mean we will have eight stitches for round two. After round two, we can go ahead and pull that tight and if you would like, weave in the send or simply leave it on the inside. And I'm going to try to flip this a bit so that it's curving the way that I want. And for round three, we are going to be bringing in our third color. We're gonna do a little bit of spot of our darker color here. For me, I'm using blue. Feel free to use whatever color you want. And I'm going to be doing a round of single crochet stitches with this color, so that is eight stitches around. Now at the end of round three, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change back to my lighter blue color. And I'm going to do that before I complete this last stitch of round three for a nice color change. And then for round four, once again, I'm simply going to be single crocheting in each stitch around. And I also wanna note, you can go ahead and uh, fasten off all the other colors. We're only going to be using this light blue or pink or whatever color you're using for the rest of the arm. I'm using the color now that's going to match the body. Now for round five, I'm going to single crochet the first two stitches together and then single crochet in the remaining stitches. This decreases from eight stitches to seven. And now for round six, which is the last round for the arms, we're going to start by single crocheting two together and then single crocheting in the remaining five. So that decreases to six stitches for this round. Now we can go ahead and create a long tail for sewing this onto the body and fasten off. These ends here, you can either um, stuff them inside. This doesn't really need a lot of stuffing, so you can use these ends or trim them down. And then you want to go ahead and make a second arm because we will need two arms for this little guy. Now we're going to start by making the hat for this little guy, and I'm going to be using my light blue, which matches the body of this axolotl. So I'm going to start by single crocheting six stitches into the magic circle. Now for round two, I will single crochet two stitches into each round. You'll notice that this will follow very similar to how we did the head of this axolotl. Now I'm not going to do this entire hat on camera. The reason being is that this hat follows the same instructions as um, the head of our little guy up until round 14. So you're going to repeat rounds 1 through 13 from the head for the hat. Now for round 14, we're going to be working into those back loops only and single crocheting around. At the end of round 14, we can fasten off and weave in our ends and the main portion of our hat is complete. Next up, we want to make the cute little gills that go on each side of this hat. So let's go ahead and get started. I've already made one, and now I'll need to make the second one. 
I'm starting with my darker blue color and I'm going to chain eight. So I'm going to make a slip knot, place it on my hook, and then chain eight. In the second chain from the hook, we will single crochet. And then we will single crochet into the next chain. And now we're going to half double crochet in the remaining five chains. And now we're going to be repeating those steps two more times. So no need to fasten off for this. We're just, just going to be repeating. So I chain eight. And then in the second chain from the hook, single crochet, single crochet into the next, and then half double crochet into the last five chains. And now we will need to do that one more time. So chain eight, and then single crochet in the second chain from the hook, and single crochet into the next chain, and then half double crochet into the remaining five chains. And now that I have the three gills, I can go ahead and leave a long tail and fasten this off for us to attach to the hat. If you want to, you can weave in the beginning tail. And now that we have our pieces made, it's time for us to get friendly with our yarn needle and attach these. So I've gone ahead and I'm placing the hat onto the head of this cute little critter, pulling that down to where I like it and then I can go ahead and start attaching. If you want the hat to stay in place, you can always attach these through both layers and that will tack that hat onto there. So go ahead and grab your yarn needle and we're going to be whip stitching these onto our body. So I'm going to start with the arms. I like to always look and see if I can see a seam and hide that more on the back versus the front. And so I'm going to place my arm onto the side here about a couple rows down. I'm gonna probably start on this row here and I'm going to be whip stitching this. So we're just gonna be attaching this, this arm and a lot of times when you start to attach the arm, it'll really flare up and out. If you want it like that, you can definitely leave it that way. But the other thing that you can do is you can bring your yarn needle into the arm. I'm gonna come down this way to the underside like so. And then you can simply tack it down if you don't want it to sit straight up. And then you can weave in your ends. Make sure you like how it looks. I kind of have a little bit over here. I want to tack down a little bit more to make it more flat. And that looks pretty good. Now I will simply weave in my end and then attach the other arm to the other side. Now that I've got both arms attached, we're going to move to these gills here, which I've already attached one. I started about six rows down and then stopped three rows before the bottom. So those rows in between that. And now I'm going to repeat that on this other side. So I'll simply start with a whip stitch, catching the hat, and then just going through the gill and working down those rows, attaching it as we go. And I do like using whip stitches for stuff like this. I do feel like it, it really holds it well and then it also helps blend um, the stitching into the piece. Now the other thing I like to do while I've still got some blue yarn here is these little lines. I find these little lines you can just place them anywhere. If you want to do dots, you can do that as well. But they just kind of add a little bit more character. 
And one way you can do this is you can insert your needle through the back of your work and then come to the front and pull that through, but you don't pull it all the way, just enough to get it through. And then I can start creating these lines. And if you want them really thick, you can do double lines. Maybe we'll make this one a bit thicker. And then just add them wherever you like, however you like to do them. It's just an extra little detail. So I'm gonna add these lines here and then to um, weave in your end, you can simply do it similar to how we started where I can just take this to the back, fasten it off, and just kind of scratch that a little bit. It goes kind of in the inside, and then I've got these cute little lines here. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on top of the hat. Now it's time to do these cute little eyes. I kind of like these vertical eyes. I've fallen in love with them. I guess they do kind of remind me of Mario a little bit. Um, so to do these, I want to show you I've done one. I'm simply stitching them on by just looping around and around to get the shape that I like. Um, now, if you want to use safety eyes, you could do so as you were working this up, or you can do round eyes or different eyes. There's a lot of different ways to do eyes on Amigurumi, so it really comes down to personal preference. You could make it to where it looks like that the little axolotl is winking or whatever else you want to do but I simply loop about five or six times shaping this vertical by, and also by doing a little bit of smaller vertical lines on each side. And then once I've got my eyes where I like them, I can go ahead and take my yarn just like I did before out the back of my work and um, fasten it off. And now the last little detail that you may wanna do are these rosy cheeks. To achieve this, I simply find um, an eyeshadow palette that's pretty neutral and pick one of those colors for the cheeks. Now for this little guy, I might choose a different color than I did on here just because he is um, a different color tone. But you simply grab the color you want and then you're just going to paint those colors on. I did more circle here. I could do you know, some horizontal underneath there. Um, it's really up to you on your personal preference. I'm just gonna kind of dot those on and you're really rubbing in that eyeshadow to be a nice blush. And then you can always go over with your fingers to really get that pigment in there. And then that's it. These are our two cute little axolotls. I did find if you want, um, I like the tops of these to curl and the bottoms to pull out. You can just pinch them in place or if you take a little bit of water, spray them and let them sit overnight, they will, um, be blocked a little bit how you like them. I think these two are absolutely adorable. They're super fun to make. I like how they will stand up on a surface because of that weight that we have. I put more weight in this one, as you can tell. The weight on the bottom really makes a difference in helping them stand, and I like those washers. I really hope you enjoyed this pattern, and um, be sure to subscribe and come back soon for some more fun projects.